Cities can be gritty, of course, but Nate Swain is on a mission to make Boston's urbanscape a little bit brighter. Ted Reinstein found out how. When we first met North End resident Nate Swain, we were intrigued by his unique brand of public art, photo murals dressing up otherwise blank walls, the courtyard of St. Leonard's Church, a bricked up substation on Salem Street. And Nate has designs for other barren Boston buildings. Imagine City Hall with green space. Back in the North End, Nate solved the problem of unsightly pull-down grates on storefronts. When the door comes down, you still see what's behind it. It's a lot nicer than just a blank door. The door at Galleria Umberto closes as early as 3 p.m., says Ralph Duterio. Once, once we sell out and I do my work, clean up, I go home, lower the grate and put the lock on and go home. Now, passers-by get a photo peek inside. One customer told me that I was going to come in for pizza at nighttime. He thought we were open. It takes less than an hour to install, and it lasts about 10 to 20 years. Swain is now on to something new, painting supersized murals. He was recruited by Lynette Shaw, an abstract artist from Lincoln, and Artists for Humanity, which employs the creative skills of urban youth. Director Susan Rogerson. Lynette makes these really large scale, wonderful, raw, wild pieces that is, are very experimental. And she was delighted to have the, the chance to work with a bunch of kids. Love the footprints, who also are experimental. That chance came when mutual friend Donald Nelson needed help losing the giant losers on the wall of this Roxbury business. Lynette and I were at a uh, fundraiser for Artists for Humanities one night, and I thought, wouldn't it be really a cool idea if we got the kids either paint the side of the building or paint a mural, basically cover it up? Nate brought the idea of working on recycled scrims, and Lynette brought her approach with buckets of paint and brooms, and we provided the space and the teens. The printer I use hangs ad banners up throughout the city and they, they're up for a few months, and then they come down, and he'd normally just throw them in the dumpster. And he was more than willing to give them to me. I actually had to do some dumpster diving a few times to, to rescue them, but... <laughs> so what do you think? <laughs> Together, they created the 30 by 70 foot abstract painting. It's kind of intimidating for me at first, because I'm used to doing smaller paintings, like two, two feet by two feet, usually. They're amazing kids. They're devoted. They're serious. They're always on time. The pride that they feel, like, I did that brush stroke. I participated in that abstract painting. I think it's kind of cool knowing that you did something good for the community, that your art can, you know, pick up a neighborhood and make everyone look at it and feel some type of emotion. And there will likely be more to come. I kind of want to start a revolution with this idea because it's this, we have the material, we have the walls we have the inspiration and it could be really wonderful. We would love to be able to do this throughout the city. I see people st driving by and they stop to, to stare, people riding their bikes by. I mean, it really has brought a little bit of color, well, quite a bit of color actually, to, to a very drab part of the city. Where do you ever see an abstract painting in the middle of the city? Never. We did good. We did good. And that mural was created using acrylic paint, which adheres very well to the former advertising vinyl, and it should last up to 20 years, maybe even more.